So in this short video, we will be discussing the big picture of Bayesian machine learning and enumerating a few reasons why you might want to use it. We'll begin by answering the question, what is Bayesian machine learning? To understand Bayesian machine learning, it helps to know the basics of regular machine learning first. Under regular machine learning, two common approaches are supervised and unsupervised learning. Supervised algorithms include classification and regression, while unsupervised algorithms include clustering and dimensionality reduction. To keep things simple, we'll use regression as our example. In regression, we are given a dataset containing tuples of x-y pairs. Our job is to learn a deterministic function such that, given a new input x hat, it can output a prediction y hat, such that y hat is close to what the true y would have been. Typically, this function involves a set of parameters, which for this video we will call w. Note that w can represent any set of parameters, like the weight vector for linear regression, or the multiple layers of weight matrices and bias vectors in a neural network. The point is, during this learning process, our goal is to learn the best version of w we possibly can. Best is defined by our loss function, so that the best w is the one that minimizes the loss. In addition, let me emphasize that the function we learned is deterministic. Given an input x, it always returns the same output y hat. Generally speaking, we can train a machine learning model by using maximum likelihood estimation. That is, we create a function, which is actually the probability distribution of the data given the set of parameters w. The learning process simply involves maximizing this distribution, p of data given w, with respect to w. We would call such a w, w hat. So what makes Bayesian machine learning different? Well, in Bayesian machine learning, we would still like to learn a function whose behavior is controlled by some set of parameters called w. However, Bayesian machine learning accounts for the fact that we know a priori what kinds of values w should have or not have. For example, we know that w is unlikely to have values of 1 million or 1 billion. Another example is with click-through rates. We know that click-through rates must be between 0 and 1. And, if you're in online advertising, then you know that it's normally closer to 0 than it is to 1. We can encode our a priori knowledge about w in a distribution called the prior. We can then combine the prior and the likelihood, and by using Bayes' rule, we can compute the posterior distribution over w. This distribution, p of w given data, accounts for both the data we observed in our training set and our prior beliefs about w. Now, you may have heard of a technique called maximum a posteriori estimation, or map estimation, which involves maximizing the posterior with respect to w. This gives us a point estimate for w. It has some equivalent forms in machine learning, for example, L1 and L2 regularization. However, the Bayesian approach goes further. Instead of finding a w hat, we instead express our knowledge about w using the posterior distribution itself. Even more interestingly, we do the same for the predictions. Instead of a point estimate y hat, we get a distribution over the output y, given some input x. This allows us to know the probability of the output taking on certain values. To understand why this might be useful, consider that knowing the distribution means we know the variance. If the variance of the output y is very large, then we know that our model isn't very confident in its prediction. Conversely, if the variance is very small, then we can be very confident in our prediction. So to summarize what we've just learned, during the learning process, classical machine learning tries to find a point estimate for the model parameters, which we call w hat. This accounts for the training data only, but it does not account for our prior knowledge. The Bayesian method accounts for both the training data and our prior knowledge. Furthermore, the Bayesian method gives us a probability distribution for w, instead of just a point estimate. For making predictions, the story is the same. With classical machine learning, we only get a point estimate. With Bayesian machine learning, we get a distribution, which tells us more than just the expected value. Okay, so now that you know the basics of the Bayesian approach, let's consider why you should use Bayesian machine learning. We already touched on this earlier, but it's worth repeating again. The Bayesian method allows us to encode our prior beliefs. For example, in advertising, we know that the click-through rate is unlikely to be 99%. It's probably going to be around 1 or 2%. Another application of the Bayesian method is that it prevents overfitting. It naturally produces a regularization effect. This will help your model generalize better to unseen data. In other words, it will perform better on the test set. 
Yet another advantage of using Bayesian machine learning is that it allows for online updating. With Bayesian machine learning, we can update our model parameters after collecting each new data point. This allows your model to get better and better automatically without you having to go in and train it from scratch. One thing I didn't mention earlier is that, because we have a distribution over the model parameters w, when we make a prediction, we don't have just one value of w to consider. Instead, our model prediction is based on infinitely many values of w, of course weighted by their probabilities. And because we have a distribution over w, we can also infer things about our model. For example, we might find that the weight for one of the inputs has a very large variance. Our model is thus more uncertain about its value. And finally, let's reiterate that, when we make predictions, we don't just get a point estimate, but a distribution over the output y. Imagine we're predicting stock returns. We can ask questions like, what's the probability that tomorrow's stock return will be negative? We can't ask these questions as easily in the classical case. So, I hope this lecture helped to pique your interest in Bayesian machine learning, and to give you some idea of the benefits of using it for your projects. Bayesian machine learning is involved in many popular models. For example, latent Dirichlet allocation, which is a popular model for topic modeling, is based on Bayesian machine learning. Another example is the variational autoencoder, which is also based on Bayesian machine learning. This uses a technique known as variational inference, which has become an important tool in modern deep learning. Finally, you may be surprised to hear that Bayesian machine learning is even used for the latest state-of-the-art transformer models, such as DAL-E2. As you may have heard, this model is capable of converting text into realistic art that faithfully represents the text that was passed in. The results are truly amazing, so I'd encourage you to look for some examples of what it can do. You may have forgotten about Bayesian machine learning, because today it's not often mentioned by name. You might think of it as something old, or something that is not used anymore. But as you've just seen, it most certainly is. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you in the next video.